Morgan LeGravier, David Boileau and Jan Ryu, will be part of the crew of the Maxi Edmunder Rothschild, which, with the skippers Franck Camus and Charles Caudrelier, will be on standby for the Jules Verne Trophy from November 1st. The sixth teammate, to be chosen between Jan Elise and Erwan Israel, will be announced shortly, routing will be provided by Marcel Van Trieste. The trophy Jules Verne is for the fastest sailing circumnavigation of the world. Here are the highlights in the sport of sailing in the last seven days. The Gitana Racing Team's huge trimaran Edmund de Rothschild is poised to hopefully break the time for the trophy Jules Verne, around the world fastest time, on standby from November 1. Emil Jarrod and Cecilia Johnson showed the world-class NACRA 17 fleet the way round a very tricky late at a sea race course. This edition of the Pondee Globe has a good representation of female skippers. We profile Clarisse Creamer of Bank Populaire 10. Hugo, the sailing Frenchman, recounts his first solo race in his new 6.5 class mini scale. He did well. The US sailing team explains match-winning leeward mark rounding tactics. Lack of wind on Lake Attersea meant no racing for day two of the four WIP 49er, 49er FX and NACRA 17 European Championships in Austria. Now here is the team trying to be the fastest sailors around the world. Je m'appelle Morgan Lagravière, j'ai 33 ans et je suis baron régleur à bord du Maxi Edmond de Rochy. Alors je m'appelle David Boileau, je suis le boat captain du bateau. Moi, j'ai jamais fait le Jules Verne. Ce sera effectivement le premier trophée Jules Verne. Ça m'évoque plein de souvenirs d'adolescent. Hein. Je me rappelle du premier trophée Jules Verne. Ça m'avait beaucoup marqué à l'époque. Le trophée Jules Verne, c'est oui, forcément, c'est un rêve. Parce qu'aller faire le tour du monde, le tour de la planète, c'est quand même pas anodin. Donc, j'avais tenté de le faire dans le cadre du Vendée Globe il y a quatre ans. Malheureusement, l'expérience a été un peu écourtée. Donc, euh, euh, je ressens toujours à, au fond de moi un peu cette frustration de ne pas avoir finalement bouclé cette boucle. Je suis même jamais allé encore dans les mers du Sud. Donc ça va vraiment être ma première expérience au grand large, autour de la planète et dans ces endroits. Donc vraiment une belle expérience que j'attends avec impatience. Avec euh, Team Gitana, on, on s'était attaqué à une série de records et c'était un, un tour du monde à l'envers. Ça reste un de mes meilleurs souvenirs, hein, le, le, le passage du horn à l'envers, le même bonne espérance. La passion, elle est aussi importante, aussi intense, finalement, sur des supports plus légers à la journée qu'en que course au large. Moi, j'ai la certitude que la, la pratique de ces supports-là permette malgré tout d'aller capter et ressentir des choses, des sensations qui peuvent être convertibles sur des supports comme des multicoques ultimes. La vie n'y est tout comme moi, euh, aussi passionné d'aviation que, que de bateau. Quand on a fait la, les premiers entraînements l'année dernière avec Morgan, c'est au cours de ces entraînements, on s'est rendu compte qu'on avait la même passion. On a très très vite abordé ce, ce sujet-là et, et on s'est aperçu qu'on était passionnés tous les deux et on a pas mal échangé là-dessus. Ah, ça alimente pas mal nos, nos cartes et donc encore une fois finalement toutes ces sensations, tous ces exercices permettent de quelque part de grandir un petit peu son expérience et son répertoire de sensations, d'aptitude et je pense qu'effectivement ça permet d'être encore meilleur quand on se retrouve sur un bateau tel qu'il soit et encore plus un bateau comme Gitana. J'ai ai toujours aimé tous mes bateaux sur lesquels j'ai travaillé tout le temps. Je peux te parler du 13, je peux te parler du 16 et... Et le 17, ça, ça reste un, un bateau technologiquement qui est super intéressant, en évolution constante. C'est une chance de pouvoir faire un tour du monde sur un bateau comme ça. Hein. C'est une part de rêve, forcément, euh, l'inconnu. Aujourd'hui, je euh, pense que n'importe quel spécialiste dirait que Gitana est le bateau, le projet et l'équipe euh, qui peut être en mesure d'avoir plus de chances de remporter un trophée Jules Verne, ça c'est certain. Behind the radiant smile there lies a resolute, talented fighter. Clarice Creamer, the skipper of Bank Populaire 10 may be an Amoka and Vendee Globe rookie, but she is a fast learner and has a great mentor in defending champion, Armel Leclerc. She was born, December 30, 1989 in Paris and she lives in Loch Macquillic, Brittany. Of her studies and career path outside of sailing, she says, after obtaining a back S, at Rue Maison, I joined a prep school in Saint-Genevieve in Versailles. 
Then, I continued my studies at HEC Business School before founding a startup with my brother, Kazarden.com, which specializes in booking outdoor adventure trips, vacations and experiences. Clarice has been preparing tirelessly for almost a year and a half for her first Fendi Globe. After months of training at sea, intense physical preparation on land and accelerated learning within Team Bank Populaire, Clarice is ready. Ready for the challenge of a lifetime. So we are here in Atasee. We have now the Europeans of the three Olympic speed classes, the 49ers, the 49ers FX and the NACRA 17. We are happy that this event can take place here in Atasee, especially in these COVID times. And also the sailors and the class organizations are very happy that we do this work and have these Europeans. This regatta is going to be a long week for sure. So obviously we are happy of how we perform today, but we are very cautious because it's a long regatta and the conditions here are so special and so tricky. So let's hope to continue sailing like that. Uh, well, yeah, it's very tricky conditions. Right, so I have arrived yesterday at night and now I'm going with the rib to pick up some minis who don't have engine and they're stuck in front of the arbor. I'm with Alex. Hello. What's up, Alex? All good. Not doing the race. Not doing the race this time, but we'll be ready for the mini at May. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny because Alex is a um, uh, skipper tra uh, training skipper yep. for the Clipper race. We met in Gosport. He was telling me that you know he was studying the mini transat. I was so jealous, and now we're both doing it. So that's <laughs> a good end of the story. Yeah, man. We nous a passé, si tu veux.
Ah mais tu fais quoi <rire> Je fais chier les travail. gens <rire> Mais non, pas du tout <rire> Qu'est-ce que tu fais Et euh, je suis à la classe donc j'aide tout le monde à vérifier s'il est bien en conformité avec les règles de la classe. T'es à la classe À la classe mini. Ok. Parce que vu que j'avais pas envie d'arrêter vraiment le mini, je me suis dit que ce serait cool d'être administrateur de la Et classe. Et du coup maintenant tu ne navigues même plus, tu vas juste ouais. ramper dans les fonds pour tomber les radeaux. Quoi. Ouais je fais les trucs nuls mais comment même je suis là c'est donc déjà pas mal. Ah c'est beau l'esprit mini, c'est beau. Ok, donc 40. ça c'est la liste de ceux qui, euh, qui sont dans la... Attention, il faut pas faire de délation. <rire> Alright, so race start is tomorrow morning and now we're just uh, having a first safety brief. It's probably the, the scary brief where they try to scare us about how dangerous the sea is. And this afternoon we'll have the race brief. Uh, more about race instructions and the race itself so yeah let's go for this and then the last prep plus two bits and pieces we're gone let's go So for this coming race, which is only probably 36, 48 hours, something like this, um, I'm going to make super easy food, already ready, just sandwiches. I just have to get out and eat so I don't have to waste any time cooking or anything. I'll have nuts, dried fruits, stuff like that, and go. 48 hours, nothing, you don't need proper, proper meals or, or anything. So that's the idea. And also to optimize weight, so that's the idea. Right, so the boat is pretty much ready. Um, I have my food ready. I had a safety brief with the rest of the skippers, and now we're gonna meet with uh, the guys from La Turbat from the training center uh, to have a last look uh, at the weather forecast and that uh, yeah, just a bit at the strategies for the for the first uh, for this first race, and then have a good night rest, and tomorrow go finally. Ah, it's funny to see with all the the skippers and uh, lots of them look really professional. It's a bit intimidating. We'll see how it goes. Uh, it's a big challenge for me, every level. So yeah, let's see where I am in the pack. So yeah, let's see post it. On se rend compte là que demain matin, là, le vent a encore la tendance à prendre là, de la droite. Il est préférable d'être sous la ligne qu'au-dessus. Parce que s'il faut descendre dans 5 nœuds, ça va être compliqué. Quoi. Là, quand on dézoome, hein, c'est-à-dire que dans cette, dans cette grosse dorsale, là, quand on dézoome donc, là, dans la nuit de mercredi, euh, ici, il se passe un truc. quoi. Okay, so the USA radio team, little drill for you guys. This one we call the lured mark drill. So we have one mark in the water. We set it up with uh, Paige Rayleigh here is gonna be the rabbit on port. And the other boat here is Eric Bowers. He's gonna dip her on starboard. So she's coming around the mark. This is the start of the drill. Comes around, Eric goes behind. Now the, the drill is going. So now we wanna sail for 30 seconds upwind and then they both on opposite tacks and then they both tack at the same time and come back together. Then when they meet, they're gonna start coming downwind and we're gonna to approach the lured mark. So 30 seconds is coming up. 
a whistle of 30 seconds. Paige, who was on port, now tacks onto starboard. Eric, who was on starboard, now tacks onto port. Now they should be on a collision course. Now, when they get together, the boat that's ahead, whether it's the port boat or the starboard boat, will cross the other boat and then bear away. The other boat, once it's been crossed, will bear away as well, and they'll both end up going downwind. So you can see them coming together here. It looks like Paige is just ahead on starboard. She'll have rights. So she will cross and she bears away around Eric. They both bear away. Now they're heading to the Lure of Mark. Now it's a battle to try and get to the Lure of Mark. Lure of Mark is a port rounding. So Paige is on the outside here. She's got to try and either get ahead and break the overlap from Eric, or if she's not going to be able to break that overlap, she's got to think, okay, how can I get a good rounding based on the fact that I've already given the, the lead to Eric to round the mark. So you see Paige is getting a good control set up. Eric's got the inside. He can go around. Now Eric carries on on this tack for another 30. Paige tacks away immediately. She goes for another 30 and they both hit the mark. The good thing about this drill is you only need one mark to do it. So you can use a channel marker, you can use a fishing boy in the water, you can use whatever you've got to run this drill. And you can do it with two boats, maybe three or four if you need to. So again, we sail out this way for 30 seconds. There's a 30 second whistle. Now they're coming back towards each other again. Now, in theory, Eric came around ahead. He's taken the, he's only done one tack. He should be ahead. Now, if he is ahead, he'll now be crossing Paige and bearing away around her, which will give her the inside. And now she gets to battle for the inside on the downwind. It's a fairly easy cross from Eric here. So he crosses and now bears away around Paige. There's the bear away. Paige bears away at the same time. They're both coming down to the lure of Mark. Port rounding again. Page on the inside this time. Now, not only does this practice your lure of Mark entries and getting your controls set up and you know, battling with another boat, it also works on your lure of Mark exit, getting your controls on properly, getting the boat up to speed coming around the Mark, and getting away from the Mark as quick as you can. Page has established her rights, pushed Eric wide to give herself some space. Controls are coming on, sheeting on, coming around the mark. Leaning out, getting the boat going fast. Reaching in for the bang. Eric tacks away. Do one more lap. Do one more lap of this. Okay, we'll go for about 30 seconds. You can mix it up if you want to make the drill shorter. You can make the 30 seconds a shorter time. Bear in mind they'll have less time going downwind if you do that. And a little bit shorter. It gives them more time coming at each other and more time doing roundings and less time sailing in straight lines. So you're trying to work on your entry to the lure mark. Again, we're doing a port rounding here. You can mix that up and make that a starboard rounding if you want or alternate it. Page will cross here. Bears away around the front of Eric. Eric bears away in, on the other side of her. They head back down, Eric on the inside this time. As I say, the longer you make that 30 seconds, the uh, page really working hard here, trying to get bow forward on Eric. It's tricky, he hasn't got much runway to do it. Eric jibes in, not the greatest jibe. He's got to get all his controls on. Page has got a bit more time to set up here. Eric rounds. Slightly wayward rounding, trying to get the controls on. Paige knows that she can come around and get a better rounding. Hi guys, this is Paige Rayleigh, three-time Olympian. I hope you enjoyed that drill, because I know I did. Remember, hard work pays off more than skill.
It's really nice that we now have actually we have an event to go racing again. It is really good to be back racing and having a proper regatta. Really nice and good fun to be back racing the other girls. Yesterday we had a very good day on the water because the venue is just amazing. Like the, the wind was so nice in the afternoon yesterday, really um, 12 knots. And so we didn't expect anything for this regatta because it's so different to Kiel. But obviously it went quite all right and uh, we're in a good shape at the moment and it's good fun to go out racing again after this Corona break. Yesterday we were really happy about our speed, both upwind and downwind, and we have been, uh, ever since the corona lockdown, we've been training super hard to increase our speed, and we felt like we did a really good job. Uh, but uh, then you have to race as well, so back in Kiel we didn't get the racing to work at all, and our concept here has been to like take off as much pressure as possible, just by having a lot of fun in the boat and enjoying it, so that was the, the key yesterday. Unfortunately, races for today were uh, cancelled. Um, but yeah, okay, it, it gave us enough time to, to check on our equipment one more time and to be ready for uh, next days. It's going to be a long regatta and also gave us time to, to catch up on all the friends. So yeah, it was, uh, was a day of waiting, but uh, well spent.